Yeah. That is not a terrible view, huh? Doesn't suck? Uh, Mount St. Helens. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Welcome to a brand new episode of Air Mistakes That Age You Faster. Uh, if you're new to the series, this is where I take subscribers' photos that they have submitted, and I break down potential concerns or mistakes that could be being made with their hair right now, uh, and more importantly, how to address those mistakes so that they can get a more youthful appearance. And today, today I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> today I am tackling a a concern or a potential mistake that I have mentioned before, and when I did, uh, you had a thought I was clubbing baby puppies, so wish me luck. <laughs> oh, and if you're new to me, uh, my name is Justin Hickox. I've been doing hair for hashtag long time, uh, since 1995. <laughs> All that does is makes me feel old. <laughs> but I like to come on here and share hair tips, uh, and I tend to do it from, well, outside. I take you on adventures while I teach about hair because, to be honest, I just get bored filming videos in the salon. I'd rather see uh, cool stuff, pretty views. Like that. Yeah, that's how I roll. Uh, so, with that said, let's dive in and meet today's model. Sound like a plan? Okay. okay. So, as in every one of these videos, before we dive in, I have to say, just remember that these are real human beings. They are subscribers from this channel that have submitted their photos for this exact purpose. Uh, with that said, you guys have been amazing about being super supportive and kind and respectful in the comment section, but let's keep that up because, uh, yeah, that's just good human. <laughs> okay, now let's meet Michelle. Folks, this is Michelle. Michelle, thank you so much for being a part of this whole thing. I always appreciate seeing people put themselves up to this kind of scrutiny, I guess. <laughs> I always feel a little bit awkward about doing these videos, but uh, you guys like them and I think they're fun. So yes, Michelle, thank you. Now, before I show you any of these mistakes, I want you just to look at a photo of Michelle's face. Before you see her hair or how it has an effect on her at all, what do you notice? Maybe it's her cheekbones or maybe it's her eyes or her jaw structure. Comment below and let me know. Okay, now here's her hair with her hair down. This is going to be the first mistake that I see, which is if you look at the front, there is no layering around the front at all. Now the concern with that is that it has a tendency to elongate the face, but that's not the bigger concern, it's that it brings the face down. And that brings us kind of to our second mistake, which piggybacks off that a little bit, and this is the bigger concern that I'm <laughs> hopefully not going to get slaughtered in the comments for, but I think this is going to be a very good visual reference for this. If you notice the back and the sides, there is no layering at all. It is essentially one length. I don't know if you've been growing out this shape for a long time and previously it did have some sort of layering or what's going on, but right now when we look at it, it's essentially one length. I've said in the past that one length long hair can be a bit of a mistake. And people got very worked up about that because they thought that I was saying, you can't have long hair. Not true at all. I'm also not saying that long hair is a bad thing. What I'm pointing out here, and I, I think you'll be able to see that here, is that when your hair is one length and long, it's simply not doing anything for her. Remember how I had you look at her face shape and say, what is drawn out? What are you seeing in here? This shape and having it one length doesn't allow for any movement or texture or any volume in areas that can accentuate that cheek structure or bring out her eyes. Does that make sense? Okay, and that brings me on to number three. And mistake number three kind of piggybacks off of all of those, and that is the length in general. <laughs> I feel like I'm opening myself up there again. <laughs> okay, calm down. The length of her hair is just long enough to where even if we did layer it reasonably heavy at this point, layers are determined by length. And all that means is the longer your hair is, the longer the length of the layers internally or in the back have to be to balance with that. You don't want layers that are super short or it's gonna be over layered. We talked about that in actually the last episode. So with that said, if we were to layer her hair at this particular length, those layers, even though they're shorter than the length, they're still long hair. And that would mean that it could potentially be very heavy and therefore not get volume again in the areas that we wanna get volume to accentuate the aspects of the face shape that we wanna accentuate. Now, before we even move to a new location, I'm gonna show you some shapes or some ideas that I like, and more importantly, why I like them. Now, typically, I would Photoshop this particular photo so that you can see these minor adjustments actually on the model, 
unfortunately, in this specific scenario, there's no real way to Photoshop in layers on her hair. So what I'm going to do is show you some different photos of different shapes that I like and explain why. Now, all of these shapes are very similar, and I chose that specific length range because I do think the longer hair suits Michelle very well. I think it looks nice on her. I think she definitely has the amount of hair necessary to hold a longer length. These lengths are a little bit shorter, which allow the layers to go a little bit shorter and become a little bit lighter. I do like the idea of a wave on her because I think it's going to soften things up a lot, and I do like the movement that these layers give. Now, bangs are also an option. It may be a little difficult in her specific scenario to do a really strong bang simply because of her hairline. If you look right here, you'll see that her hair has a pretty strong growth pattern, and that may make it a little bit more of a struggle on a day-to-day -to, -day to style bangs. So that may or may not be something that she wants to get involved with. If you have a similar growth pattern to this, you may think about that before you move into bangs as well. However, if you can control them and get them to lay down, bangs are a great option, and I don't think it's something that should be discounted. I also like the face framing layers on them. I do recognize that if your hair is longer, the likelihood is high that you're probably pulling your hair back rather often, especially when it happens to be more one length than layered. It's usually because they want to make sure they can get it all back into one ponytail. Now, yes, if you pull these shapes back, it's going to be harder to get them into one ponytail because, well, they're all layered. So your potential to have pieces fall out, especially if you have something shorter like a bang, it's gonna happen. However, one bobby pin on both sides right there, and more often than not, you can tuck the rest behind your ears, bobby pin those pieces back, and they'll stay out of your face when necessary. But the payoff you get, in my opinion, is much higher because when you do wear your hair down and style it, it's going to have a lot more movement, a lot more shape, and really bring out the features that you notice in her face and make them pop. Okay, so we're gonna move locations here, but moving forward, I'm gonna walk through the curveballs. Yes, I think you're gonna be interested in this one. So uh, let's dive into that. Okay, so before we dive into this part of the whole equation, uh, I do wanna just take a very quick second. I never do this. Two things. First of all, if you're getting value out of this video, do me a massive favor, hit that subscribe button. You don't wanna miss out every Tuesday when I bring out a brand new video. And make sure you hit the notification bell because that way you'll actually get notified when I bring out a brand new video. And lastly, I have never told anybody to do this, but I do have an Instagram page. Okay, now, with that said, ooh. Let's throw some curveballs. The reason that I love this particular shape on her, speaking specifically of the cut, is I believe that the length is still long enough that she would feel comfortable. It's shorter than where she's at, but that length coming up, like we talked about before, allows the layering, like you're seeing in this particular photo, the ability to be short enough that it creates shape and areas to help accentuate things about her face shape that we want to accentuate. I also like the wave and the movement that this shape has. Let me break down this other aspect of this curveball, which is the color. I don't even know if color is on the table in this particular circumstance. Again, I have no backstory to Michelle's specific situation. It is going to be inherently much more maintenance than not doing color. But with that said, I kind of started walking through a process because if you noticed in this photo, there's some blonde at the ends. And I really liked the way that that actually played with her skin tone, and I thought it really brightened her up. But if you also notice, her natural color looks to be quite a bit darker. So first, I actually went quite a bit lighter with the color, and that turned out like this. <laughs> I thought, mm, that's a little too much for me, I feel like. Whereas she could potentially wear it, it just seemed to start washing her face out a little bit, and I thought it was just overall lacking some of the dimension I would have liked. So then I moved over to this, where we actually toned that color down a bit, but still left some of those light pieces and some of that dimension in there to really kind of add a little bit more texture and life to the overall shape. But then I started thinking, you know what? She's got beautiful eyes. And one thing that I know has a tendency to make eyes really stand out is darker hair if you can wear darker hair. So I thought, man, I bet if we went darker, it'd really make those eyes even pop more. So I did this. And then I found myself kind of on the fence. There's a part of me that likes this depth. There's definitely a part of me that actually thinks it adds a lot of richness to her skin tone. I'm still on the fence whether or not I like it better than this though. I think I'm in the middle. I don't really know which way to go. I think I'm leaning more towards this 
than the overall dark, maybe even a little bit more depth around her skin tone. But again, all of this is much more maintenance. So like I said, I don't even know if it's on the table, but I am very curious to hear what your thoughts are on whether or not you would go with these colors. Ignore the maintenance and just think about how it affects her skin tone. What do you think? Would you go light? Would you go really dark? Or would you go somewhere in between? I think I lean somewhere in between. But, you know, like I say, curious to hear your ideas. So comment below, let me know. Otherwise, hey, thanks for hanging out. And uh, you have a fantastic week. We will see you next week with a brand new installment of Hammer Steaks That Age You Faster, subscriber edition. I'm going to hang out here and enjoy some of these birds. Because that's how I rule. I think? I don't know. <laughs>